After five pulsating rounds of the Apex Racing Academy Porsche Cup, the series heads to Road America for a special one hour long event for round six of the championship, at the conclusion of which could make a big change in what has so far been an extremely close championship. Welcome to the Apex Racing TV eSports studio. My name is Sam Fitzpatrick. I have alongside me David Sampson. And David, recently it's really been dominance from Philip Hammer. He missed the first two rounds of the championship, but then came in for round three of the championship. And he's been undefeated since. Um, how do you think that this round will be? Do you think we could see a change to the pecking order? Um, let's see, this is a more familiar track, like uh, we've had a lot of testing tracks on the drivers, so he's definitely excelled. So there might be some uh, might some guys with uh, years of experience at this track, but yeah, he's looked very strong. He's very controlled, he looks after his tyres, like I even, you notice it early in his race stint, he's not overdriving and pushing. If he loses one position like he did at VAR, he has his uh, focus down for just uh, collecting the race win. And you're going to need that with this race being an hour long, some fuel saving, tyre saving and uh, yeah, a cool head is needed. And because he was the winner in our one and only one hour long event so far this season. Usually we have the heats where we have two heats, a B final and an A final. But four races out of the 12 this season, we mix it up and have a one hour long event with a 60% uh, percentage fuel limit. In the Porsche Cup car that we can show for you now. And uh, yeah, once again, over 500 brake horsepower and uh, a weight of just over 1.2 tonnes as well. And of course, we are pretty much in the middle of the season now. This is round six of the championship. Next round will be officially the second half of the championship. And um, yeah, we've still got some pretty good circuits. We're staying in the States next time out at Sebring. Yeah, Sebring's a mega track, absolutely mega. Obviously with the pickup, it's suspension sensitive, so it's quite a bumpy track. So mistakes are plenty. It can cause lockups if you've uh, got the balance a bit wrong. But yeah, what a um, bunch of tracks to finish up on. I'm really excited. Yeah, should be good. And let's have a look at the championship as well. The pro championship first, because we've got the pros with the AMs and then the overall teams. And I mean, we look at this and it is sort of reflective. But for context, none of those top five drivers have won a race so far this season. They've won maybe a heat, but they haven't won an overall round out of the five rounds we've done so far because three have gone to Philip Hammer who missed the first two rounds. So he's down in sixth place at the moment. So that's why he's not there. Corey Lazarus has missed a round. So he's down in seventh, I think. And then Tommy van der uh, Strees, unfortunately had to pull out of the series after winning the first round. So once we take into consideration the drop score, which we will start to do next week, I think that top five will be very different and we'll see the likes of Lazarus and the likes of Hammer yeah. propel themselves up to the top. That's a good point. You notice in the top five, uh, haven't picked up a win, but that goes to show the level of competition we've had this season. It's it's not apart from Hammer's dominance in the last three, we haven't seen a uh, we haven't seen a clear cut order yet to the field. Yeah, and I was concerned that Hammer wasn't going to take part tonight because uh, five minutes ago he wasn't in the session, but he has now signed up. So Philip Hammer will have a chance at winning four consecutive rounds, and if he could do that even though he's missed two rounds this season he might take the championship lead when it comes to the drop scores uh, so yeah that is still very much alive on that uh, when it comes to the am championship uh, at the moment it is ben pedersen and uh, he had a decent round back at zolder very nearly took the overall pole position had a couple of issues and i think it was adam veselek who ended up scoring the most points of anyone uh, but uh, yeah ben i think has finished top of the ams in three of the five meetings so far yeah, Ben looks very strong and the problem uh, the others are going to have is that gap he can pull in qualifying, putting say five or six pros between them mm. um, is massive for the AM class. And uh, yeah, Ben Ben's shown he's got pro pace. Unfortunately, P2 man Kasper Kern Christensen won't be seen for the rest of the season. Uh, so that will really help everyone else below him move up through the order potentially and uh, also at the teams this one has been a little bit more live there, there is 127 points between the top two teams at the moment but really it was 127 points after the first two rounds the last three rounds have been very even between north sim racing and sim race sweden uh sim race sweden with the likes of uh, kirsten's and co uh, have really upped their game recently so could still change on that one but uh, yeah your pick north still uh still going strong no, but yeah, uh, fair point. has been close between them, but obviously that hasn't been really reflected by the fact of that dominance they pulled out at the beginning. But yeah, very good point. Um, Simray Sweden have really um, shown they've got what it takes. And THR have been, you know, scoring scoring a lot of points uh, every round. So, but I mean, North needs to take a mini vacation, I think, to lose the team <laughs> championship. 
Uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, you know, a lot of them are facing it, so there's plenty of nice holidays to go in there, so uh, <laughs> we'll see if uh, they take a bit of a break. Let's have a look at the track um, as well for this round. Uh, Road America, and of course, the driver's going into that turn one. I think, um, it's. I mean, it's such a good circuit, this, isn't it? It is, like, it is be top five best circuits in the it world. Is. Like, ob like, objectively, if you can possibly call something objective, but I feel like if you took all drivers who at least know of Road America or sports cars fans they would uh, an aggregate would put it in the top five yeah I always say it's never my favorite to hot lap and practice at but I love the race in this track always generates there's a lot you have a corner for every type of style um, there's enough straights for draft there's a lot close scuff corners to actually have a battle there's some technical corners um, but would it be top five if it was scanned to what it is today you think it's got worse? Yeah, the runoffs. There's the no runoffs. grass. It's just. But what about Watkins? Like I know, you, it's what Watkins did used to be better, but I don't think yeah. it's taken that much away from Watkins. I don't know. The tarmac. I love one and threes grass exits we sure. have in I racing, but yeah. if anyone's seen the IRL, it is just concrete for for miles. Yeah, yeah. I think it's still grass on the outside of the kink, though, isn't it? Uh, so, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that yeah. one's a tough one, but yeah. yeah, turn one is the big change where yeah you can basically run out to the wall almost on that corner. Uh, the drivers would want to do that, I'm sure, on lap one at turn one uh, around here, but uh, that will not be the case. There we can see behind us through the kink and then into Canada Corner, one of the main overtaking spots on this track. Tricky corner in this car. Yeah, well, I guess un under braking is it? Yeah, the lock up. Exactly. Uh, side by side, if you're trying to outbreak someone or push that extra inch and get it wrong. And obviously in this car, the kink is not flat. Yes. It's not flat. It's no not way. Flat. Well, yeah, unless you're very brave on the grass, yeah, it's, you're not going to be going flat down. <clears throat> and even the final couple of corners, Bill Mitchell bend and then the final corner. Mm -hmm. And maybe even the potential for a run to the line as well. We have seen it plenty of times on Apex Racing TV in the past. We will see if that will happen again tonight. We will transfer over into the qualifying after this quick advert. And uh, we'll be trackside following the AM qualifying session. Welcome back to Road America. The drivers just going out for their first times in this qualifying session, trying to uh, yeah, set as best a lap time as possible. We've currently got the AM drivers out for this qualifying session. For those who aren't familiar, the first 10 minutes are for the AMs, the final 12 minutes are for the pros. We do have a new driver, however, David, so usually that spells that someone's going to mess up the qualifying. Uh, what's the new driver's name? Uh, Bartolozzi. He is an AM. Um, so um, he is meant to be out there right now. Hopefully he gets out there. Yeah, no, I love this track. I think everyone likes this track. Um, and obviously a lot of our first experience, so I don't mind for sure, was I racing. This is where I learnt the track. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to remember, was it on Project Cars? That may have been when I found out about it. But it's pretty crazy for me because, and I still am an F1 nerd, and I maybe reject other forms of motorsport more than I should do. But this place, Road, Road Atlanta, Sebring to a certain extent, if you're a Formula One fan, you, you're just not exposed to these places. You yeah, know? That's, that was a lot of my trouble. I came from all the Formula One games. Um, and then when I branched into a set of course and R-Factor 2 for a while, um, I started to learn tracks. But yeah, I learned Sebring in iRacing. Mm. I learned Road America in iRacing. Lots of the tracks that I now call my favorites yeah, yeah, I, I, and like uh, just staples, you know, they're, yes. they're the first ones that come to your mind. Road Atlanta again, the same. Yeah. Learned that in iRacing. 
To be honest, I wasn't really big on... Yeah, my track knowledge was all F1. That was, that was my track knowledge. Yeah, yeah. For, for all those years until um, I racing, really. Briefly saw Nick Horn there, who had an absolute roller coaster of a round last time at Zolder. Uh, on both races, actually, he was uh, in the advancing spots, but unfortunately uh, for Nick, it did not work out for him. No such troubles for him tonight. It's just one race. No advancing or not advancing. It's just whoever, wherever you finish, is however many points you get. And of course, remind as well that the Jazz Water needs to take a pit stop. And uh, welcome to everyone in chat as well. Apologies for the site audio issues earlier on, but uh, you, know, you are going to have to hear our voices now for the next uh, hour and a half or so until we get to the end of uh, this broadcast. And we're hearing that Nick has a quali van. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> I give the quali bands. I don't oh. think I gave him one. I think it may have been his teammate who got a quali band. Uh, oh, Nick Kirsten's. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I, I was getting confused between the Knicks. But oh, yeah, Nick Kirsten's, <laughs> Salvatore Lane, and Stefano Senna all have qualifying bands tonight. I should have done this combo this week. Uh, I did Long Beach in LMP2, but it was dead, unfortunately. So I ended up just doing a no stop stream. The, the plan was I know. I never pit stop and it was fun, but I wish I did this. Sure. <clears throat> it was just... Um, do, you, do you think this is a good car for this track? I know that like, every car is good for this track, but uh, in, in my mind, as Robert Van Horn goes to Provisional Pole, uh, I would say, like, my, one of my favourite car check combinators ever was the C7 Daytona, Daytona prototype around this track. That sort of midway between a prototype and a GT car around this track, perfect combo. I'm coming from the, uh, just did the Road America 500 in the Nissan, and that thing is a rocket round here. Absolutely tests your knowledge and balance of this track. Um, yeah, I think this is a good car around this track. I really like this. Uh, this it's got, I still, I say I'm trying to wean myself back on to GT3s lately, but I still think this car all around pound for pound is a little bit better to drive, more fun racing. Um, it's just a more of a limited format in iRacing with these shorter races. Um, you know, no pit stop. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to what the action brings for this. So, Walker can't get the top, but now Swan manages to beat him. And this is looking a little bit more promising in the amateur uh, standings than it was last week, because last time, Ben Pearson was absolutely miles out of the rest. I think he ended up qualifying half a second ahead of all the other apps. Now, I do think on, this, on that first app, he may have been held up a little bit by Tom Heritage. So, maybe that was a factor on uh, on that front but uh, yeah at the moment Ben very much in that fourth place and he has some work to do in order to get to the top Luke's one who has had some really good results and when the drop score gets uh, considered then he will be moving up the standings maybe even as high as P2 in the championship uh, Ryan Walker the Scottish driver in second and Bezalek who was ever so strong last time out I think managed to finish sixth place overall up there in third that is quite a collection of flags we've got going on in the top ten at the moment it is yeah <laughs> We've got a fully featured flag. List. I assume you can name them all. Uh, don't test me. Uh, is oh, that you, you can do it? The first one's what? New Zealand. I mean, he's, he's pulling out the first one. Not Australia. It's Australia. Scotland, Poland. Yeah. Australia, France. Uh, is that Denmark? It is. Yeah. And then Nor. Uh, Norwegian, no. uh, red. You you see this flag every two weeks. Wait, what did you I hear skip? the national anthem every two weeks? Dutch. Sorry, why did I say Norwegian? <laughs> yeah, I meant, I meant to say Dutch. My brain's just confused. That's that case. Yeah, the top, yeah. By the way, uh, but yeah, do, do one more. Uh, obviously, the German one's easy. Uh, black, red, and yellow, and then British and French, and then what is Dutton? Can uh, you work that out? Luxembourg. Oh yeah, yeah okay. So we didn't do bad. What is the New Zealand flag now? I'm confusing myself. Uh, I think it's got orange stars on it, and it's only it's less stars as well. I think it's three on right. the right and one below, I think. Uh, Lazarus is Norwegian. Uh, sorry, not Norwegian, New Zealand. And uh, unfortunately, oh yeah, he is around, so you will see that flag later on. Um, I don't know why I said Netherlands. I meant Dutch. I don't know. What, yeah, it's just my brain. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> um, Resolek <coughs> currently at the top, fourth of a second clear. So Pedersen wasn't able to improve on that lap, uh, Ben Pedersen, that is. Um, so yeah, still six tenths down. 
Veslak really performing once again. He has taken his level up. However, that will be the end of Veslak's qualifying because he's now going out again, but you have to start your lap before the 10 minutes are up. And Veslak is only just starting his out lap, and we've got less than two minutes to go, and this is a very long lap. So uh, that will be it for the Polish driver. How does it work? How do you prevent them doing extra laps? Is it just by a, giving them penalties afterwards? Gotcha. Ooh. Oh. But yeah, if, if you do it, you basically get halfway to a qualifying ban and you could get a time penalty as well, apply to Euros, if you gain an advantage. It is Edwin Forsland, not yet set a time. He has had a couple of laps invalidated so far as Forsland, so uh, that is why he is uh, not currently being shown on the board. Also, we've got, uh, of course, Kirsten Stein from the pits. Luritsen has also yet to set a lap time, so you do expect a couple more to get up there. It's yeah, for sure. Pedersen um, now jumps to uh, sixth. I really don't know the lap times around here. I didn't do this uh, combo. It's been a long time since I did peak up at Road America. <clears throat> I know for some reason that a GT3 is about a two minute one around here. That's just stuck in my mind. It's always around the two minute mark. Yeah, sure. This track. It's a bit, it's almost identical to Bathurst, this track, in terms of time. Um, as Walker Oof. goes to the top. Great lap there from Walker. Bernand also improved, but only enough for third. Edwin Forslund, this is going to be a lap for him. I don't think it's going to be particularly near the top, but it is not a lap. But he can complete this one. He's just crossed the line, but everyone from now on can only complete the lap that they've started. As the pros head out. And Ben Pedersen back to the pits. What a what a turnaround. Ben Pedersen, half a second clear last week. This week, seven tenths short. Yeah, what a shame. I wonder if it was off tracks or... I think his first lap was in traffic, but I'm not sure what happened to the others. Yeah, off tracks are easy at this track, unfortunately. It's one of the one of the reasons I quite like it. You've really got to put your lap together. There's plenty of opportunities. It's not just off tracks for, uh, you know, lack of driver skill, but you can go for a little... You can go for the odd tenth in here by pushing it close to the grass, and that's what I enjoy about this track. Unless I get the off track in my... Sure, yeah, in that case. Then I hate the like track, it. yeah, then I'm... Yeah. How many instances did you get up to in the uh, uh, Camel GT 500? We were fine, but it was just a... Uh, I picked up a 4X in the second to last corner. I just... I literally just misjudged the whip for the car, clipped a GT3. He didn't spin. There was no damage. He carried on. My wheel was bent, brought it into the pits. 30 seconds optionals, but the wheel never fixed, unfortunately. It's just an old car, so it was undrivable, so we parked it. But no, instance-wise, we were okay. We picked up quite a few early on, uh, but then the traffic all thinned out and came easier. Hey, Leonard Trap and uh, high fives is very good, says Mr. Dimbleau. Uh Thomas Hansen in chat saying, Norway? Are you serious? We never said Norway. You said Norway instead of Netherlands. Oh, I said Netherlands instead no, of Dutch. Say Netherlands. We can play back the broadcast, but you said... We will have to play back the broadcast, said, yeah. You said Norway. Yeah, let's, let's get the guys in the back room in on that. There are no replays. We don't race replays. We want flag... <laughs> Re-sim commentary. D Dutch um, and Netherlands is the same thing. I would have given you that. <laughs> All right, we'll get back to that on a separate uh, YouTube video, I ne think. Next week. <laughs> uh, maybe I said no. I meant to say Netherlands, but... Oh, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, yeah, later on, we, we will be hosting the late Apex, so maybe we will reflect on it. Correct. Then. I want my name cleared. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, on the late Apex, we'll be discussing F124, new announcement trailer, uh, and a few details as well given about the uh, the new game. Yep. Um, along with a few updates as well to to Ren Sport, um, with various things going on on the, that platform, and uh, yeah, several other things happening in the world of sim racing. Uh, so do check out the late Apex. Should be on about 20 minutes after this broadcast ends, around 10 o'clock. Uh, for UK people, 11 o'clock if you're mainland Europe. So this flag that we're discussing there, when you was a kid, was you brought up to call it Holland? Oh, that's a really good question. I was. I was taught the flag is called Holland. Now, I've spoke to Dutch people I... about this, and they get the confusion as well. Well, Ho Holland is a, like, province Pro yes. of 
the largest. The yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's that's why it's. But their that. football team's called Holland. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like us with Great Britain and United In, yes, Kingdom, correct, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, and of course, um, New Zealand is is named after uh, another province of uh, of um, the Netherlands, and of course, it's New Zealand. Uh, that is relevant because we have got a New Zealand driver, so I'm not totally just spouting rubbish facts. Because Corey Lazarus is out on track and he is one of the pro drivers and he is trying to set a uh, strong opening lap to this qualifying session. There he is. Yes, indeed. We have to see where their laps can put them. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the overtake modes. The draft should be strong enough here in this car at this track to have some really good racing. Mm. Uh, Lennart Schnabel in chats. Uh, welcome, Lennart. Veteran of ARL, been in May series, whether it be F3s or probably done this series, haven't you already, uh, Lennart, or NASCAR as well. Um, are you two broadcasting sports cars on Monday? No, fortunately not. Uh, you're in the very capable hands of our other commentators for that one. But, uh, yes, you do have us for this series at least. Yeah, and it's a long series, right? This one? Yeah, yeah, still got six more rounds. As Lazarus goes to sixth, um, Chalet, strongest of the opening laps. Of course, championship leader is Chalet. And, uh, or no, it's not Chalet. Is Chayer. It? Chayer. There you go. Um, <coughs> Chayer up there in P3. But now to the top goes Nikolai Pedersen, who was very strong in practice. Dare I say, maybe the favourite for pole position. Uh, he is quarter of a second clear. Yeah, that's a brilliant lap from Nikolai, 6-9. Although uh, Dimbo did say high fives. Oof, that was awfully close. As we mentioned, the man who I was just talking about, he said a high five is really good. So he's laying it down. Or he's yeah. just trying to make the rest of the pros who are in chat a bit nervous, thinking, wait, did I not <laughs> practice something? Jesus of Dimbo, he hasn't had a particularly strong season. I picked him to win the championship and... Uh, it's still in the first half of the season, but it's not going to happen for Joseph. But he has had an improving, uh, improvement in form recently. I think uh, still had a couple too many incidents, but he's definitely going to be in the running for a podium, maybe even the race win tonight. He is currently on the front row of the grid. Not a particularly strong time from uh, Philip Hammer. Remember, Hammer has taken pole position at all three rounds he's attended so far this season. Sebastian Fiedlack has a huge slide through the carousel. Uh, he gets out the way, though. Very nice of him. And again, awesome livery. I think shades of orange always make a good livery. Yeah. You're right. I mean, your livery in, or your liveries in uh, Pesk were pretty neat. Yeah, watchworthy, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Apex themed in orange. In orange. I've started a new trend. Well, it's the Apex Acing TV guy. That's who you Correct. are representing truly. Um, Liam Septus uh, enlightening us that the football team is only called Holland incorrectly. So it is the Netherlands football team, I guess. It's not called the Holland football team. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't know. You know I respect whatever they want to call it. I'm just saying, in, in the textbooks we were used as a kid to be yeah. taught, they were called Holland as a yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. And on television, the broadcasting would show them as Holland. Now, as an adult, I call it Netherlands. Mm. They're Dutch, but yeah, it was crazy. When I was young, it was Holland 100% through and through. Yeah. So Nikolai Persson improving again into the two minutes, 6.7, four tenths of a second clear. Chalet, interesting, go Chalet, interesting going back to the pits and get seeing uh, a new set of tyres. Dimbolo doing the same. It looked like Persson may have just continued Hammer on. Hammer of a 6 three. Hammer, there we go. Well, we didn't know what Hammer was going to do. He didn't do any laps in practice, and he's worked up to qualifying, and he has found himself in a familiar spot. He's currently on provisional pole. You know someone's fast when they don't set laps in practice because they they're doing their prep in silence. You know. Oh well, yeah, he literally joined the session like five minutes before calling. Yeah, it's, it's a good sign. It's a scary. Yeah, sign. Yeah, but when I do that, I still only. Turn <laughs> yeah, but up you're them. doing it because you've just got in yeah. the rig five minutes before yeah. calling. He's yeah, he, but, uh, he's been in the rig it's all day. The same thing, right? Yeah. No, it's very different. Right. To put in perspective, in Philip Hammer is 7.7 tenths faster than our championship leader right now in qualifying. He's sitting P3. Mm. 
And, and yeah, I'm surprised the gaps are so big, considering that this is a track that everyone knows so well. It is a long lap, to be fair. But yeah, I am a bit surprised. Hammer and Pedersen, who were front row of the grid back at our Road Atlanta the last time we had a 60 minute race, and they're on the front row again. Looks like some of them have been watching Pesk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I didn't see if we broadcast the uh, the um, warm-up laps on the final round. But yeah, we were going to show our warm-up strats or the Apex Racing Team warm-up strats for the tyres, seeing that it was the last round of the championship. Not sure if we did it in the end, but yeah, maybe they're copying that. And Fiedelak to 15th. Yeah. Ah, Pedersen back to the pits. Yeah, so he will... He's still got one... Uh, no, he no won't. he's not got enough time. No, You've no. got to complete your lap before the 20 minutes. Yeah, the session will abort you. So we've got Am sitting in 5th, 6th and 7th. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing really well. I mean, for Walker and Veselek and Bernan, this would all be their best qualifying of the season, I believe. Yeah, the spread has been... Considering I said at the start of this broadcast that this is one of the most tracks more people are familiar with should see tighter numbers, this has probably easily been the most spread out mm -hmm. qualifying session we've had. For sure. I mean, there shouldn't be seven tenths between the top three. Uh, Lennart Schnabel saying, I want to see a pairing between Sam and Aaron at some point. Well, uh, I think Lennart took part in the last F3 season uh, when uh, Aaron was broadcasting from <laughs> this studio as Shia goes round. Uh, but also, Lennart, you can uh, tune into the uh, Radical Sim Racing Europe Championship on Sunday evenings. That's hosted once every three weeks or so. And uh, yeah, me and Aaron cover that one. That's usually a good series as well to, to watch, so do check that out on uh, Sunday evenings. I think the next one is next Sunday, I believe. Or Sunday after that. No, we've no, it got is uh, next Sunday. It is next Sunday. When's our four hour one? We've got a four hour one. So actually, I say that I'm not going to be able to do the next Radicals one because we will be doing Champions. So Champions I just stole you. Sports. There you go. Yeah. Uh, is it four hour race? Sunday week? Yes. Final, final round of the championship, I believe. So we did the first round, right? And that was at Daytona. Where's the final? We've got seven days to figure that out. Excellent. Don't rush. Okay, no, I won't rush you. <laughs> um, so there's not many left to challenge Hammer. We have still got Dimbalay out on track. We've got Lazarus out on track, Parker yeah, so four and Mayenborg. And, five. and Hammer could still improve. Parker was very close to an off-track there. That little grass clipping, very annoying. Very nice livery. Dimbolo back to the pace. It was actually a pretty good lap for Dimbolo. He must have uh, messed up at some point because the pace through the first few sectors was absolutely no issues. Here comes Parker. Only needs a small improvement to get up as high as maybe the second row of the grid. But uh, he doesn't improve. Lazarus does, though, and does move up to the second row of the grid. He moves up to third place, so that's big for Corey Lazarus, one of our favourites for the championship. When you take into consideration the drop score, he is pretty much at the summit of the championship right now. Let's see if Hammer can go even faster. <laughs> it's a good lap so far from him. Yeah, it is. And oh. look at that. <laughs> look at that. That's the high fives we were talking about. Wow, he's... Yeah, he's almost a second clear of Pedersen. That is incredible. He is a second clear of uh, Lazarus, and he's 1.2 seconds ahead of our championship leader at the present. Yeah. No one's ever won an Apex Racing League tight score after missing the first two rounds of the championship, but Philip Hammer is well on course for doing it this season. Yeah. Oh, impressive lap. I like the way he set it. It's almost like he orchestrated that to be like, I want to be the only man on camera. Yeah. I'll yeah, cross yeah, yeah. it <laughs> three seconds before the end of the event. Yeah, very, very impressive lap. And of course, a reminder as well to check out the Racing Unleashed Championship, um, or challenges, I should say. Uh, more of them coming up in uh, the next few months. Uh, no details yet released about the third challenge, but there will be details released on Sunday, so do keep tuned on that one. Uh, you can sign up for it for free over at apexracingleague.com. It's a different car and track and format for each round. So put your name down, and uh, if there's a format that you fancy, then you can go for it and perhaps win a few hundred quid whilst you're doing it. 
Let's have a look then at the grid. It is a standing start for this race. Philip Hammer on pole position. There's Nikolai Pedersen in second. Corey Lazarus in third. There's uh, Shaye, Dimbolo, Walker, Veselek, Ironborg, Bernand, Swan, Parker, and Rasmus Pedersen in 12th. There's Thomas Firm, Ben Pedersen in the second half of the field, shockingly. Uh, albeit, when we've seen him do this in the past, he usually does quite easily move up through the order later on. Uh, then Sebastian Fiedelak, Robert Van Horn, Mads Luritsen, Kevin Richard, Tom Heritage, Joel Dutton, Nick Horn, Lucas Bartolozzi, uh, Glyn Broughton, Turner, Edwin Forsland, Nick Kirstens, and Stefano Senna. So standing start, obviously very important here. We've seen a mixed bag from the uh, pack. And so always P2 is cursed in this series. Let's see if Pedersen can get off to a decent launch this time. The five lights are on, and away we go. It's a good start for both of our guys on the front row of the grid, but it's a bad start for Corey Lazarus, who is going to lose out to Shea down into turn one, and already he is fully behind. Pedersen putting a lot of pressure on Hammer. He's almost getting ahead, just going into the breaking zone, but has to pull in behind and maybe use that draft on this first lap. Oh. As round goes Shea in the background, our championship leader with a big setback straight away here at Road America as it gets close for P3 and P4 still, but Hammer and Pedersen streaking out in the lead. Yeah, we'll get you a replay of what happened, but yeah, I've got no guesses. Doesn't actually look like there was another car involved from the lines that people were taking, but we could have corrected it the time we saw them. Is uh, Walker going to have a run here? Oh, look at oh, the move. Hammer side by side. Really aggressive so far. It's Nikolai Pedersen. Yeah. But he's not quite able to get it done, but I like the attacking nature of this first lap from him. Great start as well by Kevin Richard, by the way. He's gone from 18th to 11th. Ah, uh, legend. Yeah, I think the drafters can be strong here. That's what I was saying. I do think, because uh, we're, we're so used to your typical IMSA cars, which have definitely had its uh, draft nerfed over the years, whereas I think Peacup's just still got that exciting factor to the draft. So we'll see what Hammer can do. They're going very single fire at the front five, seven old cars now. Uh, Edwin Forsland also up a bunch of places, up seven, nearly up eight, actually. That's in with Thomas Byrne. Ben Pedersen, by the way, did not take the start, so hopefully we'll see Ben Pedersen later on. But our championship leader in the ARMS uh, with, uh, yeah, uh, not even a bad start, a non-start so far. A uh, wide for Walker. He's going to lose out to Meinborg. That's three places gained now for Meinborg. He was one of the latest drivers to improve in uh, qualifying and uh, he's now up there as well swan overtaking banan for p8 so plenty of changes so far in our amateurs it's now walker veselek swan and banan the top four so we've got your nuker in chat which if i'm mis not mistaken that is uh Shea, unfortunately has lost force feedback um so that explains the t1 incident i recognize the the avatar so yeah i believe that oh, you knew him as a child did you no, I know him from Twitch, oh, and sure. he seems to have the same. Oh, Discord, Twitch, one of the one of the three, five hundred. But yeah, ninety nine percent sure that is hundred percent sure that's Shea, yeah. uh, which is gutting. So Pedersen staying close, four tenths of a second behind. We wait to see if Hammer's qualifying pace advantage translates into the race. If he has got that advantage, then even with this strong slip stream round here, uh, Pedersen will not be able to keep up because he was some three quarters of a second behind earlier on. Um, but at the moment, he is keeping tabs. The gap will be not much more than two tenths of a second going into turn five. And of course, if he can stay this close, the fuel saving could well yield him the race lead when they uh, pit later on. Yeah, we do have to remember that. Um, not many times in a racing career do you pit a peak up. I would say the NEC... The Nord 24. Oh, sorry, Tom Heritage has had a spin, I think. It's just dropped about five places. Oh, yeah, yeah good spot. No, I'm saying that uh, tracks like this, we're not really used to uh, pitting with the uh, Porsche Cup. No. Locking at the line and locking for the pit guy. If you're assuming it's a GT, if your brain kicks into GT3 mode where we just abuse the ABS on entry. And it's not an easy pit entry here. One of the. With a bump, yeah. Trickiest. I remember um, back when, uh, back in 2017, 2017, 2016 maybe. Um, yeah, uh, the pro drivers in the iRacing World Championship Grand Prix series really struggling on that pit entry as well. So um, yeah, can be done by the very best. 
pits are nice in place. This is good. This is what we want to see. Was a concern. And uh, Dimbolo is staying with them as well. And even Lazarus as well. 1.8 seconds behind, trying his best to bridge that gap. Okay, replay coming up. And uh, yeah, here was the race start. So, see, so yeah, Hammer really got a good start. He defended the inside. And we'll see what happened to Shea, yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah, losing force feedback. If many people think I'll oh, just deal with it, you not, not in a Porsche Cup. <laughs> Yeah, you got, if you've got no feeling of the... Wow. That looked more than just force feedback. That looked like a complete wheel failure. Well, I, I think he realised he'd lost force feedback and just binned it straight, like, deliberately. Uh, yeah, I think. Oh, oh, Kirsten's picked up a oh, knock. Oh, no. Oh, that's a mess. That is a mess. Yeah, he just picked up a bit of a knock there, and once you're on the grass, he was, pa he was a passenger. So, yeah, very unfortunate. Oh, we could see a change for the lead here, up the inside into turn six. But the outside line is pretty good round here, and so you won't necessarily lose the race lead. Could Philip Hammond, wow. these guys are really good rivals, came into the series at the same point, have been competing with each other every round since then, and they remain alongside through turn seven, or lose them plenty of time, and this is exactly what the New Zealander, Corey Lazarus, needed in order to get back in touch with these Rostrum drivers. Back on the inside again, his pedestal, he's almost completely clear, but now he's got a very long route to travel through the carousel, yeah, but he's willing impressive. to travel that far. And he does take the race lead. And uh, that is only really the second time that Hammer hasn't been leading a race yeah. since his introduction to the series. Gimbalo is definitely going to have a run on him as well. If I'm getting his car balance right here, let's see. I imagine Gimbalo's got a pick of a choice. So he's probably going to want to go right. He doesn't. Thinks better of it. But yeah, like I said, I don't think Hammer's going to be too fast. Like, we've seen this from over and over again. At the start of the race, he's he's willing to look after his tyres. That's uh, a, a focus point, you know. Uh, not willing to just sacrifice everything for lap time. Uh, some great copy pasta from uh, PX7 in chat. If Lucas has a million fans, then I'm one of them. If Lucas has 10 fans, then I am none of them. If Lucas has one fan, then that is me. If Lucas has no fans, then that means that I am dead. Oh, very love good. that copy pasta. Indeed. Oh, Luke Swan is a goner. Oh, no, oh, he's back. Maybe internet. Okay, he's back. Oh, Hammer looks like he's coming under threat here from Dimbalo. I say, I do think Hammer's just thinking long. We know he has the pace. I think he's just hitting a fuel target, a strict fuel target, and he's not willing to stress those tyres. So if it means losing a position or two to get that done, then that'll probably pay dividends. But let's see. Has Dimplo, I think he's driving this one smart. As I say that, you almost went for me, but yeah, you could definitely go for me, Pedro Dimplo. But uh, he I think is Nick Horn's lost a bit of time that lap. Yeah, I think he was ahead of Heritage, wasn't he? Yeah, as Kevin Richard gets past James Parker, the um, THR cars are all in a line now, though. Ports and Turner, Heritage, and Horn. Be it bought a lot to see, might break that up very soon. The new guy, yes, in one of those very fetching apologies. No, that's Senna, isn't it? I thought he, I thought bought a lot to see may have had. Oh, bought a lot to see is French, I thought he was Italian, so I think he may be wearing those that Italian livery as well. But he is not, so he's running an all white livery, which he did submit. Did bought a lot to see this isn't like a, an eye racing paint, this is the paint he submitted to the software. He wants to run all in white, very much the Wimbledon decals. I think he's. <laughs> Very nice. Do you think uh, the THR guys are trying Ooh. to no-stop this? Wow, good avoidance. Oof. You got some Italian paint down his white French side there. So Stefano Senna is from the back, I assume, from a uh, Q-band you mentioned, yes. yeah? Yep. Because he's plenty fast enough. So we'll see him get through the field. You speculated that the THR cars might be going to the end of the race with no stops. No, 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 no way, no way. I'm joking. Their lap times will be even slower. Plus, it wouldn't be workable. It, you, no, I was joking. I've just been doing a lot of long beats this week, so. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> no stoppings on my mind. We had a driver in the GTP category 
in uh, another one of the championship, the Rick May Tech sports car series that we broadcast on this channel. Yep. And they did a one hour, 30 minute race in a GTP and they didn't stop because half of it was under safety car and they won the race with no stop. Was it a Porsche GTP? Uh, I think it was. Yes. I think it was. Really good on fuel with that car. So if you're going to go for a fuel strat, then the Porsche is a good pick. Parker is really vulnerable here. Not a great start for Parker. He's been overtaken by Richard recently. He's up eight paces now, Richard. What a start for the Frenchman. Here comes Fiedelac. Barely enough space on the inside, but he has found it. And he is three. Uh, Lucas has lost a bit of time since that incident. Seven seconds off the back of Senna now. OK, we've got a replay coming up. And yeah, with this all, uh, yeah, show us how it was done. Very common overtake round here. Yeah, this was a great setup move, and it lasted what four or five corners. Do you take much of that outside, like off track, on the entry to turn five around this track? Not anymore. I think back in the old time, on a way you could just put heat through, and it was just about throttle. Then yeah, but nowadays. <laughs> It's crazy, but nowadays you find that the tyre heat sensitivity is, is more important than how early you get on the throttle. Sure. Because sometimes drivers push it too far and yeah. they pick up the, the, the slowdown. You look at Watkins, Watkins Lens, the same T1 now, the optimal line is almost not getting an off-track just because of tyre performance. Sure. Uh, obviously early in the race where you're just after defending, then it's a different story, but the lap time, yeah. Tires are so sensitive nowadays. <laughs> That's why I think Hammer's... Well, let's see, Patterson's not exactly proved himself to be a bad driver. I'm just saying we've seen this from Hammer where he he's not hiding his pace, he's just not using it right now. He's just doing sure. what he needs to do, getting the fuel, keeping his tires in a good window, and um, if he needs to push, he'll do it later on. And, we, and we've seen that in these Porsche Cup races in the past. Maybe the best example is Michael Yanni winning at Interlagos last season. And uh, that was another hour-long race, and he managed to go two laps further on his first stint than many of the other drivers, and it easily got him the race lead, despite the fact that he never led for the first part. And Rasmus Pedersen has gone too deep into turn uh, three, and he's now he's been overtaken by Edwin Forsten, so he pulls alongside us. Pedersen, if he has just enough speed, might get a bit of the side drop, but if anything, Ped uh, if anything, his uh, deficit was too much, and Forsten is up to. 13th place, and that is fifth out of the out of the um, drivers. I used the right there. You just saw them on the exit curve, but here, I assume you're talking about this. Oh, one. sorry, I was, no, I was talking about the turning. Oh, the actual on the right hand side. Yeah, you, you want to put your lefts. You want your the curve to be on your lefts, but you don't want to go any further than that because then you do your the radius just becomes too big for you to turn. Sorry, I thought you meant uh, the exit curb. That's why I compared it to Watkins Glen, like pushing the exit too far. Sure. It's a long old queue of cars, isn't it? Uh, goes up to Luke Swan in eight. And then we've got Bernat, Richard, Fiedelac, Parker, Forsland, Rasmus Pedersen, and Van Horn. Luke Swan is definitely having uh, internet issues. I saw him disappear on camera. We've seen him disappear from our software. So hopefully his uh, Australian internet holds out long enough. Although it might just be the ping. Probably his internet is probably fine. It's just... Uh, really far for it to travel. Are these gaps up front? Uh, three, four tenths uh, separate the top two. Dimbelow's staying in draft of Hammer. Uh, Lazarus is a little out of it. And Cor and um, Mayenberg, again. Them two are out on their own almost. Yeah, not good sign for Lazarus because he was in the draft of these three drivers at one point and he's dropped back since then. So. Max like Lauritsen just lost two positions there to Worm and, Dut and Dutton. Dutton? Mm. I don't recognise that name. Is he new? No, I think he's been around the whole season. I think you're just being uh, quite insulting. <laughs> hey, he might have just been clean, clean, calm and collected and stayed off the systems. Well, let, let's show you Dutton, see if he's like got a nice livery or something that maybe we can remember him by. Or maybe he's got quite a, a dull livery, although we might have a change for the leader. Uh, no, I think Hammer's going to lift. Out. Yeah, he's just lifting it. So. And that's a lot of fuel that he's saving down there. A lot of fuel. He, he was so close and could lift off. So was he. Oh, there's a mistake, though. Uh, that is going to be the lead given up by Nikolai Pedersen. And Dimbley might go through. 
and he is, and Pedersen didn't really put much of a defence there. So Hammer now leads, but is that a good thing for Hammer? Yeah, I think tyres is strat one, fuel strat two. Uh, but yeah, he can, he can carry on his fuel saving. If he's serious about just hitting a target, then if someone sends it, you just stick to your target. I like to think that you don't save fuel behind someone, you go faster. You know what I mean? You're not saving extra fuel, you're, you're, you're saving more by keeping the same lap time. So all, you, all you're doing in the lead is sacrificing some more lap time now without the draft. I'm not sure what you mean. Um, <laughs> if, you're, if you're in the draft, you're using less fuel because you're having a hole punched in the air for you, so you've got less air resistance, which means that you have to apply the thoughts all for less time down the straight. Yeah, I know I meant... And you I meant... can lift off earlier because you're, you've got more <laughs> speed at the end of the straight. Yeah, if you're just hitting a fuel target, though, it means you can... Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I didn't mean it that way around. I meant it the other way around. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Oh, uh, who's that? That was, it was just some dirt out flying onto the track. Oh, no, that, that looked like a wing mirror, like, you know, splitting into a thousand pieces. But, uh, yeah, the Bill Mitchell Bend, they went. A little bit of debris coming up from somewhere. And still these drivers all in a queue. And it's getting closer and closer now, is this queue. Uh, Forsen has dropped off slightly a bit. Forsen's now up 11 places. Uh, Sigma Sweden really got stronger as the season has gone on. Um, by the way, Porto Lotzi, I think, just went off the track again, but he's quite removed in 24th position. Not a great debut for Porto Lotzi. Yeah, still a long way to go. And I'm seeing he's, what, 1.6 KI rating, so it's tough out there. Oh, it's Dimbolo uh, has... Pedersen has yeah. moved up. Oh, but they lost a lot of time. Lost a lot of time. And now nearly second behind. Oh, there goes the move from Richard. Wasting no time. And it's position number nine for Richard. And Bonanza lost another one for Vilak. And Vilak might even get another place here. No, he has to back out of it. But Richard is... Maybe that's how Richard has got many of his other moves. Because that was just a bit of cautious breaking there from Bonanza. He didn't want to attack Swan. And Richard was willing to break a bit later and, and got past. I actually got to know... Um... Richard from Porsche Cup. We uh, were battling for quite a few weeks in officials, and uh, in our Interlagos week, we just yeah just got chatting like he, because we were very close on track always. Um, yeah, he's a great, he's a good guy. Obviously, he's been caught up in quite a few incidents this season, so his uh, results haven't really shown. Yeah, I'll have a look where he is in the championship. Twelfth uh, at the moment. Missed the previous round, however, so that did not help his cause. Yeah, because if I remember rightly, he definitely could have used the drop week somewhere else. I think he got, as I say, I think he got involved in big accidents in two, at least two other races. Uh, Liam Slipdiff's in chat saying Horn has been practicing no uh, non-stop all week, which is a rarity for Nick because he always complains that he only jumps on like two hours before the race. Start in practicing. his defence, he didn't claim that this week. No, no, exactly. So, yeah, yeah Liam, I think, is probably telling the truth. But uh, Paul McCartney in 22nd, he is being beaten by both of his teammates. So... Yeah, but he's no, he's no stopping member, so... Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's only got another, like... Well, uh, I mean, to be fair, maybe I made a mistake and didn't set the uh, the fuel limit. That's always a potential thing. It is. So maybe but then who, who, would, the who would check the setup to put the extra in? But yeah, it's a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... This is hopefully all hypothetical, but if that was the case, then I think the results would stand. So if someone was on their feet and uh, changed the set. So Kevin Machado going up against Luke Swan here. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. But yeah, Luke's been doing that the whole race. Oh, as Fiedelak's going to have a look. So Richard's going to have to take the outside lane and hopefully make a... Yeah, no, he's, uh, he's just packed out. It just overall a bad call. He couldn't make his mind up decisively and then Fiedelak had a look. Now he's just got to not fall into the hands of Bernard. All these, and this train behind, this is the problem. Even if he's caught defending one of these, he's going to have a... It's quite a gaggle, as Matt Malone would say. Yes. <laughs> wow, look at Hammer. Yeah. I, I don't like to use the phrase, but he's, he's put the hammer down. And he has put the hammer down. I think there's someone in the background again, if we can get a wave. I, I think that's his shoulder outline. Oh, yeah. 
have to account for the YouTube delay. Yeah, it's about 25 seconds if uh, if they haven't used the two times speed. But the drivers do have like a light or something which tells them that they're being shown. So there you go. Yeah, we'll have to find out what happened because Dimbolo lost a position to power. I assume they just battled hard into a corner because I think so, yeah. yeah, they both lost about eight tenths of a second and uh, that was when Pedersen got back ahead. I don't know if Liam Slipdiff says trolling us now, but he's saying no, he's been practicing a no stop strategy. Well, if the drives are limited to 60% fuel, then oh. that's not going to happen. Yeah, I've just reread his first message. Horn has been practicing the no stop all week. Oh, you sorry. read that as non stop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> he has not, Bad. surely not, been practicing the no stop all week. I'd be curious to know the number, like what the number is for a normal lap and what the save would be. So here is the battle for P2 a couple of laps ago, and this is why they lost quite so much time to the leaders. Oh, it was... Oh, I mean, it's a fair move, but... So this is the feed lap move on Richard. No. I know, so this was the lap before. Oh, the this lap before. they both got past Benand. Yeah. So Benand just got mugged there. Yeah, um... Yeah, um, the Pedersen Dimbler mode, there was, the move was clean. He, 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 when they made contact, there was still plenty of uh, track on the outside. So it was just fair hard racing, to be honest. Oh, that would be cool if Nick Horn can pull off the, the no stop. <laughs> uh, where would he be? So for the no stop, he's sitting an estimated P... I mean, it's a long pit. Three, like four... Then. I mean, to be to be clear to people, like, and obviously I, I'm concerned now that I haven't like set something right or something. But like, you know, if it's sixty percent fuel limit, you are yeah. not zero stopping it. To be yeah. to be absolutely clear, that <laughs> you you can go thirty five to forty minutes on a tank of fuel. You are not saving twenty. You, you'd have to save fifty percent of fuel. <laughs> you'd have to use almost half the amount of fuel you would normally use in order to do the no stopper. He would be more than to happen. He would be more than forty seconds back if that was the case. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fifty percent. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I do sometimes think though, that they should have. As oh, no, oh. one's gone up. Oh, that's a shame because one was heading up this so train for a while. Who was behind him? Was that Forsland? Who was right behind Swan? Fiedelak. Fiedelak. Yeah, Swan blinked out into the last corner, and I think Fiedelak was just like, "No, nope, you've had your chance. Like, I'm throttling. I'm not waiting for you to reappear to sure. work out where you are." I imagine that's what the replay is going to show. Oh, 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 oh! Wow, wow! They all made that. Oh, I think that was Park as well. He squeezed him a bit into T1, and uh, Banan continues to fall down the order. Now oh, overtaken by Forsland as well. The man who was as high as a uh, P9. A yeah. Banan said nothing wrong. He's just been. Every group of cars he ends up at the back of, unfortunately. He's got the pace. But yeah, um, yeah, I think Luke Swan just disappeared at the wrong time and Fiedelak, um yeah. Was enough given space to ghosts and he put his car where he thought Luke might not be and when he came back he was and he ended up going off, so. As we're gonna get you that replay now, I might be making this whole story up. Okay, so we see Luke, I believe, disappears into the last corner. He does, yeah. and when he reappears, he is yeah. politely moved off the track. Yeah, because the car behind ran a bit deep himself as well, didn't he? So, Well, technically, no, there was no one there. So. No, but you missed the apex. <laughs> if it was his apex. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get to decide where the apex is. <laughs> yeah, but... but Technically, he wasn't battling. You can't say he missed the apex and went into someone because there was no one no, no, there. No, I didn't say he oh, went okay. into someone. I just said he missed right, the apex. Right, okay. I thought, you, you know, I was going to say, that was all fair. If you disappear, you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Liam Sceptis in chat saying he's very frugal. Um, but, yeah, I don't think that frugal enough. Uh, his, his car just sips fuel gently. So unless he's got some kind of, like, um, hybrid system in that thing, which is uh, helping him. Yeah, it's going to struggle. Yeah, agreed. Oh. 
Long carry on. Uh, well, I was just going to say, oh, as Porcelain has come into the pit, so this is a fairly early pit stop, but he wants to get out of the traffic, I think, as does Porcelain. Hmm. Long, long pit lane. Yeah, but only if he can guarantee he won't come out in traffic. My math has him out in busy part of the track, so I'll be interested to see where he comes out. Mm -hmm. I I think he's going to be just behind Borzalotzi. I think he'll only have Borzalotzi and Senna to overtake because it's a Oh, really you're long right. It's about 50 seconds. Yeah, you're right. This is a long one. So he's taking 14, 15, 16, 17. Quite a little fuel here. I would think it would only be like 15 seconds worth of fuel for Forsman, but a lot longer than that. He's still stationary. Nick Kirsten's his teammate for Simray Sweden also coming in. I hope that Forsman hasn't sped on pit entry here, but this is now over 30 seconds stationary. Just because I've got my pit information off, that's what I'm going to fit. Is Nick Kirsten's... Oh, they're taking tyres. Well, Forsman is taking tyres at least. Uh, I don't think Kirsten's is. No, now Kirsten's is. I did not think the judges would be taking tyres behind this second. This has never been a thing that they've done in the previous hour-long races. Because you lose 26 seconds or so by taking tyres. So this would be a... I, I don't think the tyre deck is that bad. Right, yeah. But yeah, we thought he might be close to Botsalotzi. But yeah, with that extra pit stop, then uh, he's nowhere near. He's nearly... It's the best part of a lap down. Yeah, and Nick Kirsten's also the same amount of time, 51.47 and 52 for... I also don't expect 52-second pit stops. Yeah, he's, he's almost going to be lapped now, is Kirsten's. Oof, Kirsten's has pitted early to get out of the traffic, and he's about to be... Uh... Well, I did, were they going for the early stop to like get the fresh tyres and to undercut people, but... I don't think anyone else is going to be taking tyres. I mean, now the drivers are going to be doing 15-second pit stops. They've got, they got 35 seconds to make up on yeah, the and, others. And he's got a leg it. If you can see on the track map, he's got a hammer coming up on him really quickly. Unless, have they started on official fuel? Official series fuel? Would that make sense? Or is official series Official fuel is pretty high still. I don't know the number, but I'd say like 32 litres. So I suppose, that, you know, I suppose in this series, that's quite low. I think official fuel is around 32. Sure. I haven't driven the car in a while. Yeah, that would get you... Yeah, that would get you about this distance, I think. That's about a third of a tank. Hello, Matty in chat. So I'm board with Ryan Walker from Satellite Racing, running P6 at the moment. And P1 out of the AMs. If it ended like this, the AM Championship... Uh, well, of course, Pedersen is 25th and one lap down. Kasper Kuhn Christensen's out of the championship. Nick Kirsten's has just had the longest pit stop this season. Uh, and then <laughs> it comes Adam Veselek. So Adam Veselek would, is currently P4 in the championship, but if it ends like this, uh, he'll be up to P2. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. I don't expect any early pit stops unless it's the likes of, say,. Because now Fiedelak's got a big window in front of him now. I'm just scanning down the list. Anyone who had a penalty. I don't know what's happened to Senna. I assume damage because... I mean, I don't think this is too different to how we usually see Senna, right? Last week at Zolder, who was usually in oh, that okay. position. So we're passing with those same guys, the THR guys. Okay, perhaps I'm rem remembering wrong. Maybe you're thinking of Edson. Ayrton was notably better. Yes, I yeah. remember that. It, no, yeah, no suspects to find that. You'll concede to that one. <laughs> but do you remember watching Senna, Joe? Um, he died on my birthday. I remember. Of course, yeah. But I was very young. I don't remember the crossover because I, I grew up with Formula One. Like my parents, you know, I live right next to Brands Hatch. I grew up surrounded by Formula One. Um, I don't know. I would have been very, very young. I, I can't remember. Sure. Yeah, I remember what I think was watching him, but I don't know if I was watching replays and... Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. As uh, Robert Van Horn is in. Let's see if he takes tyres. Let me DM him quickly. <laughs> Do not. Joel Dutson has also come into the pits. He's the new guy, yeah? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's Borsalotzi. Yeah, I know. Oh, it was, sorry, it was sorry. a joke from earlier. Yeah, no, you've ruined I, it. I, no, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I usually appreciate callback jokes. Yes. But I didn't 
yeah, I'm not, I'm not. All smart right, Robert enough. Van Holm with a 14 second there pit. Yeah, that's that's what we expect. No, so I'm expecting mate, that has to be a speeding penalty then from the other guys. 26 Maybe, seconds, but they went on the jacks. You saw them go on the jacks. Okay, I, they I, went on the jacks late. Really no, late. Yeah, so I don't think they put in a full tank to start the race. I think they put in, so they had to take more fuel at their pit stop because they didn't start the race with as much fuel. Right, that's, that's a long... So that's why I thought they may have started with official series fuel. Um, uh, Joel, Joel Dutson, uh, 10 seconds longer in the pit stop. So I wonder if he... Two tyres? Under fueled as well, or two tyres? That I would be know. very quick for two tyres. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think tyres in this car is like 25 seconds, but I, 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 I could be wrong. Feel free to correct me in chat. I would send Robert a new livery. But anyway, he's looking good. Very short pit stop. Although he is running an El Clasico. Yeah. And sometimes that means more. <laughs> I like this livery of Fiedlack. I've started seeing this team a lot more than officials, actually. I had a battle with one recently. I went to come on the radio like, look, mate, I broadcast your team. So chill out, like, <laughs> <laughs> Stop stop lobbing it, mate. Give me P7. Yeah. Give you <laughs> yes. Stop. Is Fiedlack catching up to Veselek? He started a long way behind Veselek. So on that last lap, he lost a tenth and a half. So not really. I think that on the most part, they're sort of matching. So I think five seconds will be tough to make up. Yeah, I think it was four at one point if memory serves. So that he's lost out a little bit. And he does have Richard, who um, is perfectly able to make a move here. And he was ahead of Fiedlack at one point. But if I remember rightly, um, Actually, I think it was Fiedlack. Uh, he went to set up um, Bernand and then uh, got it all wrong and Fiedlack got by. Kevin's having a look now. Nice and easy on the brakes. Cover off the switch back. Lovely. Don't defend the ghost, just leave it, leave it, leave it. That's it. So... Robert Van Horn has come out. He's only six seconds behind Glynn, Nick Horn, and all those. So he's going to kind of hope that by the time he gets to the pack in front, that they start pitting. Well, Nick Horn isn't pitting. Knew that. Oh right, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Search is really making me laugh in YouTube chat. Yeah. No stop is starting to come good. Mads Loritsen is in the pits, and it also looks like he is stopping for a KFC McDonald's and a drive through coffee. Ah, dear. Yeah, 45 seconds. Very close. No, but that's not a... Because a, a speeding penalty is 40 seconds, right? Yeah. I don't know what... I'd make, I have These numbers are huge. I'd never stop for 52 seconds. Well, I think he'd sit tyres. Even if the Jackman says you need more fuel, I'd be like, look, just take it out, I'll <laughs> save. Please let me out I'll, on the racetrack. I'll walk the rest. Yeah, I'll walk it, I'll push. <laughs> Oh, Pedersen pushing it around the final corner. He is going to be vulnerable, though, here from Dimbolo, who I think has been quite passive so far, so I doubt he'll go for a move, let alone into turn one, which is always a very risky place to make an overtake. And, yeah, he's just going to lift out off this one. So Pedersen still in P2, but now three and a half seconds behind Hammer. And hasn't really saved that much fuel either, has Pedersen. He's usually been punching a hole into the air, so not... Likely he's going to be able to challenge Hammer tonight. Yeah, Hammer's just shown again. Look, now the start of the race is over and his tyres have, um, you know, gone through the uh, beginning phase. He's able to just stretch his legs. And again, we've seen the advantage go from one and a half, two and a half, and he's now three and a half seconds ahead. No attack again from Dimbolo. Again, just the early lift. And you know, would expect Dimbolo to be able to go an extra lap on fuel, but that will be tricky because this is such a long lap. It is tricky to save enough fuel to go the extra lap. I've seen a trend from Lazarus. He is fast, but like on that second pack, like he's he always leads the charge behind the the front couple. Sure. Last yeah. couple of races. Like very quick is Lazarus. Stays out of mistakes. But maybe just lacks that one lap pace in this car. Because we know he's fast, is Lazarus. And of course he, he did win one race back at Hockenheim and won both of his races at Brands Hatch. That was the yeah. first two rounds of the season. But you've got to remember back then, Hammer and Pedersen weren't in the series. They only joined for round three. Uh, Dimbolo uh, also has really only come on strong in the final last couple of rounds. So, you know, had it been, you know, the first couple of rounds, maybe 
maybe Lazarus would be at the top. Saying that, you know, Stromeri and Van der Struis, we haven't got out here tonight and they were present at the start of the season. So yeah. maybe I'm being a little bit unkind to the grid that we had at the start of the season. But uh, basically my point is Hammer and Pedersen are very good. They're very tricky to beat. Uh, by the way, shout out to one of our sponsors, our title sponsor for this series, Apex Racing Academy. If you want to get uh, the setups that many of these drivers are using, you can visit apexracingac.com and you can get coaching as well from Michael Yanni, who gets compliments from all the Apex uh, Racing Academy Porsche Cup users uh, for his uh, coaching, hosts a group coaching session, which is part of your subscription at Apex Racing Academy, uh, I think every uh, Wednesday evening. Uh, you jump into that and he basically tells you how to drive fast and a lot of the drivers part of this league really do appreciate the tips that he gives. So uh, if you want to be part of uh, that Porsche Cup community or if you want to get uh, data packs and setups for GT3 cars, touring cars, single seaters or anything like that, do visit apexracingac.com. Well said. Uh, Kevin Richard is in, in, in to his pit stop. I'm hoping. Oh dear. Pedersen. Cooking tyres. Dimbolo up to second. So Robert Van Horn is... <laughs> now his pit stop is starting to scare me because... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what are these people doing? No, I don't, I don't know who's are right they, yet. Are, is t taking tyres the better thing to do? Like, it, not, what is that pit stop for Richard? Is that two tyres? That must be... So we've had a 52, a 45, <laughs> a 24, a 32 and a 14. <laughs> Stefano Senna, please, Stefano, tell us what the way is. At least match someone else. Can't Correct. Be the most common pit stop is a 52-second pit stop. Yeah, that's that, exactly <laughs> but it. We know that's not correct. No, you can't get that back. You, I don't care if you've got new tyres. The race is not long enough to pull back yeah. 35 seconds on Robert Van Horn. Yeah, unless you're changing into a GT3 car, it's not, uh, not going to make That would time. make the difference, yeah. Okay, so Stefano Senna is pitting for... Okay, so he's currently flat. There he's go. taking tyres. A lot of drivers taking tyres. We have not... I I remember back at... Oh, what? No, he made a mistake. Because he went straight back down. And I why would you go up on your jacks after 10 seconds of sitting? You go you go up on your jacks immediately? No, because the fuel and tyres are taken separate. Are we in Porsche Cup, though? Yeah, I think so. Oh. Then you should definitely not take tyres in this series. Holy moly. Yeah. So I think... I think he only took one tyre. He only took one tyre, yeah. Because he, he accidentally had it ticked and he had to untick it. So now that car is not going to have good balance. He, he just needs to hope that he had the front left be taken because that is the one which, should take, which takes the pain around it. Yeah, perhaps Liam called it in his last message. The no stop is starting to come good. No, don't start buying <laughs> into this, Liam. <laughs> Falsities, you know? Well, some of them are when a lap down. Robert looks like he's fueled for only a few laps. I mean, I don't know what the right call is here. <laughs> Hamat now four and a half seconds clear. But obviously we saw uh, Pedersen make a mistake, didn't below a void. But Hammer again, just hitting his targets, fuel and tyres. Looking a little unbeatable at the moment. Right, and we've got Nick Horn and Luke Swan in, in, in. So Horn. Is into the pits. Uh, Luke's won, by the way, 14.4 seconds. That's a bit more like it. Yeah. I don't know what the others are doing. 14.4, exactly the same as Robert Van Horn. Let's see. As Mads Wilson is dropping. And Van Horn got ahead of Swan as well. So that's a good pit stop. I mean, we did see Swan go off the track, but that's still good from Van Horn because I, I don't think he was ahead of Swan before. A horn. 16 seconds, so a little bit more fuel, but pretty much the same as the other two. Yeah, so tyres are just too costly. I'm calling it. I don't care if you only put oh, one. Oh, someone's in the wall. Someone's taking the old turn. Layouts. That would have been Mads Luritsen, whose uh, relative, Aske, recently managed to win the Pro-Am Championship in the Apex Racing Academy Formula 4 Championship. Um, Mayenberg just towed, I think. Oh, no. And we might get a replay of what happened to Mayenborg here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, I hope that's a brake failure. I, I'm pretty sure it was because the drivers are ahead of him. I think we're back markers. So uh, Stefano Senna was one of the ones who was wiped out. 
Yeah, so was that where Mad Luritsen was caught up? Because I saw Mads drop and then he was caught on the other side. I'm not sure, maybe that was later, but yeah, we lost Mads. So Hammer, Dimbelow, Pedersen, Walker, Fiedelet, Parker, Pedersen and Bernard and Worm are all in. Let's see. I'm expecting 13 seconds at least. Come on, prove me right. Nope. Hammer's 14.9. Dimbelow a little bit quicker. He's out easy into P2, ahead yeah. of Pedersen, who matched him to the 100. So Robert Van Horn with the fastest pit stop on the grid right now. Oh, no, it's just been tipped by Fiedelak. We were 14.25. A long pit stop for Ryan Walker, 23 seconds. Not sure what was going on for Walker there. Oh, no. Robert Van Horn, Samsoid Simsport, fastest pit stop on the grid at the moment by two thousandths of a second. <laughs> <laughs> easy. And Robert, is Robert going to take advantage? No, he's just caught up a little bit. Very close to Rasmus Pedersen. Uh, Benand just ahead of these drivers. I'm not sure if Benand was ahead of Pedersen before the pit stops, actually. I think he may have jumped him. He had a 1.6 second faster pit stop. So that's worked out very well for Benand. Swan might be attacking Van Horn here. He wasn't able to get that move done before. Now he's having to go defensive. As dropping out for a moment, Buckinghamshire broadband for Swan. But uh, he's not able to make it round there, and uh, Van Horn holds on. Yeah, so I'm assuming... I think that it Kirsten's and Edwin Forsland got speeding penalties. I know it's tight. No, no, because they couldn't, though, because they took tyres. Ah, because and the Jackson penalty okay. is longer. Got you, yeah. Uh, Sasha Meyenborg, oh, yeah, of course, went back to the pits, didn't he? But he's back out there again. You may get a penalty later on. Uh, even if it was a hardware issue, which I'm sure it was, um, it's a bit like, I don't know, it's a bit like a mechanical issue in Formula 1, I guess. If you wipe someone out, it's still a penalty. I feel like that's maybe it. Just a similar thing. Anyway, Lazarus and Veselak, the last drivers to pit, has come into the pits as we'll get a replay of uh, what happened earlier on. And I think this might detail what happened to the unlucky Stefano Senna. Oof. Oh, yeah. He actually saw it coming. And he definitely saw that coming and tried to take evasive action. And that was Veselak who got hit. That. I don't think that was brake failure. Different type of failure, but... <laughs> you don't think it was a brake failure? No, I think he just uh, <laughs> forgot what track he was on for a second yeah. there. No, because he wouldn't have slowed down at all if it had been brake failure. Just, uh, I think he just, yeah. Well, it could have been a lot worse. He, he, did, he did well to thread the needle. No, he, did. he just gave a bit of a knock to both cars. Yes, indeed. Uh, so Rob Van Horn hold, holding off Luke Swan. There's quite a gaggle there, a uh, pack of four of them. Uh, Veselak, now leader of the AM drivers, was behind Walker before, but he is now ahead of Walker because Walker had a longer pit stop. But he may have taken a tyre, good Walker, so he might be back in play later on. But if, if he took any tyres, it would have been one tyre. I don't think he would have had enough time for take, to take two tyres. So. That'd be an interesting strategy. Yes, indeed. Uh, so let's look at the movers and shakers. Dimbelo up three from the start. Wesselak up two. Fiedelak up nine. Parker up four. Uh, Rasmus Pedersen up two. Robert Van Horn up five. Kevin Machard up four. Mayenberg down seven. So I have to find out what happened there. I think, uh, I think we thought he towed, so I'm not sure what happened. Maybe towed near the entry of the pit. So he my board. Yeah. yeah, he towed. I think he did. Yeah, I thought he towed, but he's sitting P15. What? How on earth would he tow and be in P15? Uh, yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Mm, yeah, he's a minute off the lead. Unless he hasn't pitted, of course, unless he's towed without the pit. No, he'd be pitted. Oh, there's a horn. Oh, no. The oh, corner's no. dropping, yeah. He didn't go ahead of his teammates as well. He had, yeah, a couple of positions ahead of them. Even with the slightly longer pit. Oh, and Stefano Senna is in the pits again. Uh, 
Banand into the pits. Oh, no. So maybe Senna and Banan came together in some way because they're both in relatively similar that, times. That's a big shame for Anthony Banan. He, he had pulled off a good strategy there to get himself back into the top 10. But it's uh, been undone, and this is an awful track to take an extra pit stop on. Oh, is this a drive throw? He's very, very left. Oh, that's a vague point, yeah. He is very left. The drives are limited to 17 incidents. Yep. It's like the officials. He's too far left to be pitting. Well, we'll see if anyone else falls for that. Senna did come properly into the into the box, it seems, so he did not have a drive through. So Senna for a fast repair, I think, from that incident with... Uh, who had the brain failure? Sorry, brake failure. <laughs> Meinberg. Meinberg. <laughs> yep, so a drive through for um, Fernando. Easy done, I should we set the limit at 17. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to make you compete in this one time for 17 yeah. extra an hour at Road America. I um, I don't want to boast or anything, but uh, I actually won a race the other day. Oh, congratulations. It was my first race in about a month. What did you race? GT4 Zimmerler? No, GT1 at Monza in the Pro 2 GT Championship. Excellent. Uh, I was number one seed and I won by 15 seconds. About against 10 other drivers. So, uh, you know, if, any, if anyone's looking for a driver, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, my salary is, I, I want at least two grand a month oh. to race for you. Oh, okay. So. For you to race in 1.3k softs? Uh, I think it's like a 1.8k soft. So oh, actually, wow. The, yeah, uh, no, you've earned that money then. You. Yeah, yeah, jokes on for sure. Oh, dear. I jumped into Imza for officials. It was dead. So I was like, okay, so no pit stops. Mm. And then I blew my call off. Oh, obviously deliberately blew my call off. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but that doesn't matter if you're doing the no stop for it. Yeah, exactly. You're going to lose the places to everyone anyway. <laughs> so this battle has been going on all race between Pedersen and Diplo. Um, their pit stops were the exact same. They pitted on the exact same lap. They've been around each other all race. I don't think either of them are fast enough to pull away from the other. So, no. Unless one of them makes a mistake, they're going to be locked like this for the rest of the race. I think Pedersen's made the more mistakes of the two of them. Mm. Uh, but he also, Pedersen seems to be the one with a little bit more pace as well. Uh, but let's see. No mistakes will definitely play into Dinglo's hand with this uh, with 15 or with uh, 14 minutes to go. Reminder that we've got the late Apex coming up later on. I'll quickly open up what the show notes are actually. Uh, just to remind myself, and then we can do a proper rundown. Um, the show notes, eh? Show notes. Show up. notes, eh? I'll make sure I get my frock on. <laughs> um, F124 reveal trailer. I racing Vein Sounds development video. Uh, Le Mans Ultimate featuring their Euro Tour and uh, their fixes. Motorsport Games and BTCC. BCO Infinity. Grand sports stuff, and then obviously we'll look ahead at everything going on with Apex Racing Team and Apex Racing TV as well. So tune in to the late Apex at 10 o'clock UK time and 11 o'clock Central Eastern time, like 6 o'clock American time, I guess. And I'll definitely be awake. I shouldn't have drunk this many BAMs, mate, honestly. How many are you on? This is third. Yeah? Yeah, and I might have one of my own like a different brand on my desk as well, but I haven't finished that. Basically, I can see very fast, if that <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> yeah, uh, here, oh, yeah, producers are oh, oh. opening cans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 no, that's round. That is round for person. You mentioned that he'd already made a couple of mistakes. Yeah. And that is another one. And he <laughs> is uh, <laughs> fairly close to the wall there, but he's, he's kept it out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dimbolo may not have had the one-to-one -one pace of Pedersen, but Dimbolo, I haven't seen Dimbolo to make a step wrong yet. So that separates the leaders. Uh, Hammer, Dimbolo and Pedersen, roughly four and a half seconds each between them. And Lazarus again, sitting back about five and a half, six seconds. Yeah, Lazarus just had a really bad lap. He lost one and a half seconds that last time round. He made a mistake, I think, in sectors three and four of the previous lap. Uh, so, or, sorry, sectors five and six of the previous lap. So 
Um, yeah, Lazarus is being caught by Veselak right now and not too far ahead of Fidelak, so there could still be a battle for P4. Uh, I've just noticed with a change position with Luke Swan, because Luke Swan is now ahead of Rasmus Pedersen and Robert Van Horn when he was behind them both, so Swan on the move. But I think he would have been higher if it wasn't for his internet in the last corner with the incident with Fidelak anyway, so... Yeah, yeah he was ahead of those guys, wasn't yeah. he, before? He's basically just got back those places. The disappearing thing is uh, obviously frustrating for people around him for an hour. So this is the closest three of bats, at least, that we've got at the moment. Yeah, the race has definitely spread out. We've got Ryan Walker and James Parker on top of each other. And then, yeah, these three, uh, Swan, Rasmus and Robert Van Horn. So the, the parties are between 7th and... 11. Some more replays coming up. And this first one is an onboard. Ah, uh, oh. just a bit blindsided on the apex and took too much grass. It's this old Von Horn clipping the grass. I will be frustrated how he gave up that one. Yeah, just three glass grass clippings on the rear right and yeah big push cups hard enough to stop without that oh luke swan's weaving to uh break the draft luke doesn't need to just drive straight when you disappear the draft is piss yeah <laughs> <laughs> man i remember i mean i don't think anyone's really ever taken advantage of um sort of connection stuff have they as far as i'm aware when it comes to top level but yeah if you could you know press a switch to Make yourself disappear for a bit. That would be nice, especially in NASCAR. Yep. Be very, very good. To teleport uh, ahead of the others. Joe McDonald in chat. Wow, podcast getting all fancy with a rundown now, lol. I'll be listening later. I didn't. Wow. I don't remember show notes and a rundown. No, you, ju you just turn up, don't you? I just. <laughs> mate, we're talking about sim racing. <laughs> you could call me at three in the morning and we could do this podcast. Yeah, we're really organized. We. we <laughs> We, we spend, whilst we're eating our dominoes, um, you know, a good hour going through the sim racing news to make notes. Correct. And actually, form our opinions. a crazy occurrence today. It's, it's rare, maybe only twice, but I performed the basis of the show notes today. Yeah, you made the sheet. Yeah. Yes. Well done. Oi, 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 add the information, sir. Well, yeah, you, yeah. What? Go on, no, try. No, I'm saying, like, you put in some of the headings, yeah. Oh my but God. I'd say, like... <laughs> I'd say the workload is 50-50, right? <laughs> okay, okay. All right. It's quite tense. Always. Yeah. We're not competitive about anything. No. <laughs> Hello, Alan in chat. Yeah. Uh, so Hammer's put down a 6-9 uh, as the best lap in the race. Yeah, he's really stretched from the uh, beginning. So he's got a six-second lead now to dim below. And that's opened up to a, is that almost five seconds? Yeah, that's almost five seconds back to Pedersen now. Veselak now within one second of Lazarus, though. Lazarus is, is sort of struggling. On that last lap, Veselak, well, you know what? Lazarus and Veselak just set their fastest laps of the race, and they were actually both faster than Dimbalo and Pedersen. But Veselak's just flying. Veselak's absolutely on fire. And this would be his second consecutive win in the amateur category. He was really strong at, at uh, Zolder. And, uh, yeah, the guy is absolutely just switching it on this season. Um, and one thing we don't show, but let's give some shout-out to, Weslack's only 3.6k. The guys Sam's describing that he's chasing down are 7.2 and basically 7.1 lap time-wise, so it's very impressive. Mm. Or he never races officials, he's hiding in AMS, and uh, he's about to be exposed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the I ratings are so good in this. Well, Correct, yeah. Top, yeah, top top 16. There are no drivers below 2.9k. Correct. Ah, oh, there you can see on the, on screen. Oh, there you go. And of course, the uh, colours represent the class. So, blue are class Blue yeah. is uh, class A, and uh, or license yeah license A, and uh, the green is B license. Not that that means 
really anything, to be honest. Uh, oh, wow, there you can see. Now we can see safety ratings. Yeah. What's your safety rating standing at the moment? You, you feeling all right? It's the worst it's been in maybe two years. Not seasons. Both my formula license and my sport car license are like a 2.0. But then again, I've been doing Monza Rain. I've been doing Long this Beach. Good, yeah, yeah. I've been doing basically battle royales out there. Yeah, if you just do a North race and uh, no. set that down. Here. Sebring next week. Sure, yeah. That would be easy. Um, I thought Ben Pedersen may have just gone off the track, but he did not. doesn't really matter anyway for Ben Pedersen. Of course, championship leader in the AMs going into this round. I think he will still be at the conclusion of this round. Uh, he did get ahead of Stefano Senna, uh, with the help, it must be said, of uh, Mayenborg, who did uh, wipe out Senna from about 50 metres back. Uh, but yeah, only recovered up to 24th as Pedersen, after basically losing a lap right at the start of the race did not take to the grid whilst everyone else did. So well, that is why he is so far down that in 24th. Uh, this man has been leading on the most part, similar to VII, he lost the lead for a lap or two, uh, but was very quick getting it back and he hasn't looked back since. Do we know much about Philip Hammer before? Like, do you remember many series before? Yeah, so this is his third season of this championship. Uh, ah, okay. Finished top of the Pro-Ams last season, uh, but that was when we had a lot of pesk, uh, like, uh, Qualifiers, drivers, Michael Yanni and uh, Patrick Thompson, uh, Louis Balicki. Oh, wow. Bernardo Farrier. Oh, wow. So, so the pros were pros. I think the cutoff for the for the pros were like, was it like 8K <laughs> rating, I think. So, uh, yeah, Hammer was top of the pro-ams, which that is still says a lot. Yeah. similar standard to, you know, frankly, you know, the, the top drivers of, of, of this season. Um, but he also did this season as well, maybe two seasons before that, I think, season seven, and uh, was uh, one of the top drivers even back then. So, But, I, you know, I did not expect him to win the first four races he took part in this season. But that's what is he, what's he's going to do. Yeah, indeed, he is going to. Much like previous races, once he gets that lead, he just keeps on calculating and building that gap. They're taking no risks and no mistakes. But, yeah, Dimbelow's really... Really been improving in the series, really making a name for himself. He's going to be start, yeah. He's going to be doing very well in the championship, grabbing big points. I think the drop week's going to hurt, help him because I think was it Hockenheim he had instant near the end. Uh, I think he's had instance every round. I mean, I'm looking at his was it Road Atlanta points, and he is quite far down the order. He's currently 11. Oh wow! His points are 78, 20, 52, 95, 67. Where was the 20? What track? Hockenheim or uh, Red Atlanta? Brands. Ah, okay. It's 52 was at Red Atlanta. Okay. Uh, this will be about 120. Yeah. So a lot of points. You will move up to about seventh in the championship, I think, after this. Yeah, if you can keep this pace up, then it's going to be doing good. But yeah, obviously, Pedersen... I do think Pedersen has the one lap pace over him, but... Yeah, Pedersen's just not going to put it all together today. Uh, Kirsten's just got past Broughton Turner, by the way. So after that massive pit stop for Kirsten's, uh, he has got one of those places back. And Tom Heritage just got past uh, Joel Dutson for 17th place, top of the THR drivers. We're seeing uh, Wes Lack on screen, but that, that gap now, he's yeah. not a second away. He's six tenths, four to six tenths away on the last lap. He was half a second faster. Pretty much since the pit stop, Veselek has been the second fastest man out on track. Yeah, hey, impressive. Maybe he's, he's got better tire wear than the others. Yeah, I think he just saved it. Just That's the key in this car, right? Having something to give at the end. Bad news is he's only got one more lap to go. The race leader is approaching the line. And we've got, oh, slides for Lazarus. And that could be the gap gone. It is gone. Oh. Corey Lazarus gives up the lead. He had a big slide. And I think once he realized that Veslek was going to be alongside him going into Bill Mitchell Bend, he uh, did not uh, not fight it. When do you ever see a 7.2K guy yield to a 3.6K <laughs> guy? No, that was more than, he didn't yield. That was all he had, I think. And what's strange is because Lazarus had this in the bag. There was a mistake at some point after the pit stop that lost him. He lost uh, one and a half seconds in one of the laps, yeah. Yeah, no, a few laps before that, I think he lost more significant. Um, not sure what happened, but 
Yeah, and then Westlax just chewed away lap after lap. And yeah, like you said, been almost the star of the show in the second half of the race. Up three positions. Yeah, will score some 110 points or so. Can West, I think Westlax too far, 2.2 seconds back from Lazarus, but up nine positions, been very strong. And obviously he got caught up with Luke Swan, but he didn't lose any time in said incident. And now I've got a replay. So I think Lazarus lifted up here after the flight. Yeah, let's say. Let's, oof, it was quite the spin. Mm, maybe. I'm not sure. I think he would have lost it anyway, but I think that's why he lifted out. He just duck dropped a tyre. Yeah, yeah, he's you're... still up shifting, to be fair. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. I was in the lead, 15 seconds to go. And Philip Hamlet is very nearly there. Of course, it was uh, the previous one hour race we had in this series where he made his debut and managed to win back at Road Atlanta. Managed to move on with wins at VAR and Zolder, almost uh, unchallenged for most of those races. And tonight, despite being challenged in the early stages, he managed to recapture that qualifying pace, which for him, three quarters of a second clear of the rest. Wow. And he's going to finish 10 seconds, ten clear seconds ahead of the rest as well, <laughs> after 60 minutes of racing. And it is Philip Hammer with his fourth win of the season. He remains unbeaten. And when the drop scores are considered after this round, he may well be the championship leader. Joseph Dimbler with by far his best result of the season. That is yep. what he has been waiting for and what I've been waiting for after picking him to win the championship before the season started. Nikolai Pedersen completes the podium and winner of the Am Jazz is Veselek with a, a fairly uh, dominant show and a superb second half to the race where he really was taking it to the very best drivers in the series. Yeah, kudos indeed to Hamel. Uh, I think the most dominant victory we've had and continued the track, I think that um, says a lot. Um, but yeah, great drive. I mean, Fiedelak up nine positions as well. Lazarus losing out there on the lap before White Flag is going to haunt him a little bit, but um, still a strong, strong showing. Yeah, still strong from him. Are we going to have any more overtakes? I think everyone is pretty much sorted. So unless anyone gets a post with penalty, that should be the results complete. We'll go to a uh, quick advert. But uh, once we are through with that, we will go to the race results and have a chat with a few of our drivers. So welcome back, and the drivers are losing their minds and some, <laughs> doing some burnouts. Uh, usually a sign of um, elation. Of, of elation, yeah. And uh, when they're like this, um, but yeah, fairly clean race actually. Uh, hopefully everyone got on with one another because uh, I think besides that crash for Mayenborg. Yeah, good point. Very clean race. We really didn't see much, did we? I mean, we had that little bump, didn't we, with Lucumshire broadband, but. Uh, that was about it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There was no big accident for T1. Lap one was really clean. We had the force feedback failure, Mayenburg and Luke Swan disappearing. Bolton. I don't can't think of anything else. Yeah. Great work. Yeah, and should be easy work for the stewards this week. Philip Hammer wins out then, nearly 10 seconds clear of Jose Dimbley. There's Nikolai Pedersen in third. Veselek top of the arms. There's Lazarus Fiedelak, Parker Walker very strong in eighth place. He led for most of the arm race. But he did fall off a bit near the end, didn't he? He was 15 seconds away from Bezalak. I thought he took a new tyre as well at his pit stop, but his pace wasn't quite up there with Bezalak after the stops. Then Swan, Rasmus Pedersen, Van Horn, Verm, Mayan Borg, who did well considering that. I think he towed, maybe, or at least went in the gravel at one point. Then was Benand, Richard, Forsland, Heritage, uh, Dutton, Horn, Kirsten, Broughton Turner, 
Bortolozzi, Loritzen, Pedersen of the Ben variety, Senna and Shea, who fortunately went out on lap one so I couldn't mispronounce his name too many times because frankly we've had enough of that so far this season. Let's have a chat with some of our drivers and we've got a few who are up for a chat. Who would uh, I'll let you have first picks. Who would you like to drag up? Uh, Joseph. Hey, Joseph, can you hear me? Okay? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Congrats, mate. Brilliant race. P2, you must be happy with that? Yeah, I'm very happy with that. Uh, how did you find the, first of all, the competition with uh, Nikolai Pedersen? It seemed like you two were on top of each other for pretty much all the race. The same same lap uh, you pitted, the same pit stop time. Um, apart from his mistake, um, how did you find it? Yeah, we were almost bumping uh, the whole way through and it took a lot to kind of try and match with him uh, and stay with him. But I was obviously uh, clutching in quite a lot to try and save some mm -hmm. fuel. Uh, yeah. But yeah. He must be pleased. And Philip Hammer, I'm assuming he looked as fast as he was because a 10 second win there, he'd seemed to stay out of trouble. He had to defend Pedersen at the beginning there. I think he got past, but how did his pace look out there? It was like uh, Gabriel Salomon all over again. Absolutely <laughs> mental pace because, um, yeah. He was pulling like a second or so uh, in the final stages and I just couldn't find that time. But uh, the one thing I would say is that I did overfuel the car a fair bit because uh, something was playing up with my uh, fuel calculator. Uh, okay, well your, your pit stop time was competitive uh, to your competitors, so um, yeah. perhaps hopefully you got closer than you think. Um, how did you find the track? How did you find the combo? And how did, certainly, how did you find the hour here in a Porsche car? I can't, I, I, I can't off the top of my head I remember a time where I, I drove the Porsche Cup for an hour. Yeah, the tyres were absolutely screaming for help. They were just <laughs> burning. Good. Um, I mean, it was it was tough. But uh, yeah, I just tried to make sure that make as, many, as few errors as possible and just want to try and preserve that tyre life. But yeah, the combo is really actually quite fun. The slipstream helps a lot to keep it close. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Excellent. Yeah, no, brilliant result. Yeah, I, we were deciding uh, between yourself and Pedersen who was going to win, and I called you. I said Pedersen would make a mistake, and was it two laps later? He did, and you uh, capitalised. Yeah, so congratulations. Uh, I think this is your strongest race of the event so far. If I remember, if I remember. Yeah, this season it is. I got a P2 in a, an injury round last season, actually. Oh, excellent. It seems to suit you being consistent. Yeah, uh, that's No, that's brilliant. Um, anyone like to give a shout out to? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to give a shout out to Gabriel. He's been an amazing coach and I think he's really helped to get me into this position where I can fight at the front. Excellent. Yeah, he's pretty fast. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you very much. And are you looking forward to the next round? Which thank we you. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. Um, <laughs> Sebring. Yes, I knew that. <laughs> yeah, Sebring is a great track. Really good for racing as well. So I can't wait for that one. Excellent. All right. We'll look forward to seeing you there. And good luck. And again, congratulations on P2. We'll talk to you next thank week. Thank you very much. Yeah, see you Cheers. Goodbye. Uh, Joseph Timbo, very well done there. Yeah, some kind words as well to Gabriel Salomon, who of course won the yeah. championship last season. Um, will be going for Pesk, I think. I think he's part of Fyra now, is uh, is Gabriel. Um, a Danish driver, so it makes sense for him to join that uh, team with many, many Danish drivers. And uh, yeah, he will be qualifying for Pesk, I reckon, next season. So very good driver to learn from. Uh, let's next have a chat. I, I want to have a chat with Ryan Walker who joins us now. Um, Ryan, congratulations. A uh, really good result out there. P8, second place out of the AMS as well. Uh, you seem to have a uh, yeah, strong pace tonight. Yeah, Road America has always been uh, one of those tracks, uh, strangely. Uh, I always, I've never been quicker, so I just came into this race with the plan of just aiming to finish and managed to have a good qualifying and they took took the arm pole so I was real happy with that and then in the race I, I was leading the arm class and then just added uh, too much fuel at the pit stop but 8th overall and 2nd in the arm class I'm, uh, I'm more than happy with that yeah yeah I was trying to figure out uh, after that pit stop what exactly it was I was thinking did you maybe take a tyre or something Oh, but you know, clearly, yeah, as you say, it was uh, just the fuel element. Uh, do you enjoy these hour-long races? I mean, it's unique in these Porsche Cup cars. Do you quite like the challenge of, uh, you know, having a sort of a GT3 style race in the Porsche Cups? Yeah, that was 
after it, but that was my first time doing a, a mini endurance in, uh, in these uh, these cars, and I really enjoyed it. They just that tactical thing of having to look after the tires, but also having to keep up the pace. So I enjoyed the challenge, and uh, I think yeah, looking forward to doing doing more of them. Absolutely, and I mean looking at the championship. Pretty bad round tonight for Ben, so he gets a little bit closer and there were a couple of other rounds having a difficult time. So, you know, do you think that maybe a top three in the championship is still on? I mean, what what's your what's your aim when it comes uh, to, to, to the title? Uh, I've not really got any aims, to be honest. It's just more just to jump in and have some fun and uh, just see where, see where we end up at the, the end of the season. Uh, after this, maybe one or two two races day towards the end of the season so I'm pretty much uh, out of contention for a championship but yeah we'll just uh, take it as it comes absolutely well we wish you the best of luck for that one Ryan is there anyone you want to give a shout out to uh, first of all you and David for uh, the, the awesome job that you do in the broadcast and they yeah the team at Satellite Racing for they just being an awesome place to be a part of and play the sponsors uh, Nemesis Lab the uh, Maradness, the uh, Ellis Engineering and uh, Dr. Dabba. Awesome. Well, thanks for jumping in and having a chat with us, Ryan, and uh, we'll see you back next time. Yeah, nice job, Cheers, Ryan. Uh, Ryan Walker, the eighth place overall tonight. Of course, also a, a, a former Apex Racing TV commentator as well. as commentated with him uh, some six years ago now. Wow. Uh, had some legendary moments with... Uh, with, with Ryan, so um, yeah, very good to hear his voice back on the uh, channel again. Uh, who would you like to have a chat with? I need to interview Robert this time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you stole it. You last stole time. it last time. Hey, Robert, can you hear me okay, mate? Yes, sir. Yes, mate. Congratulations. Um, talk me through it. How did it go? Because you, or like your own words, you didn't get your qualifying together, but you finished uh, a strong 11th from P4, 5th in AM. Um, how did you find it? Yeah, I did ruin my, but yeah, that's that's just the way it is. And I, yeah, I was a bit struggling to uh, to not destroy the tires because of the one hour. And um, yeah, I was trying to fuel save a lot, and that uh, that uh, put me the fastest uh, pit stop. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it did. I, I, I guess him. <laughs> it did. Yeah. <laughs> And I was a uh, bit early, so yeah. No, you definitely made it work. I saw there was a little moment in T5 at the bottom of the hill. It looks like you clipped the grass under braking and uh, went deep onto the sand and lost two positions from Luke and was it Bernand at the time? I can't remember. But um, that's us, maybe. Was it just a? Was it just a? Uh, was it just you clipping the grass or was it a lock up? Yeah, that was a really shit moment because uh, I think I was on podium P3. Uh, of the class at that moment, but there's a little strange bump uh, in 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 that curb, and I was mm -hmm. indeed a bit too much to the right, and uh, then the car just locks up, and uh, yeah, I lost my podium there. But yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, we're just seeing a replay now on the screen. Such a shame, but yeah, great recovery. I mean, you uh, recovered very well, uh, and I say you nailed your pit stop. How did you find the hour format compared to the heats and the finals and all that? Um, I think you cannot really compare the two races because in the uh, heat format everybody is uh, pushing a bit harder to uh, get to the finals and this race is more about uh, yeah, not destroying the tires but uh, it's another tactic and uh, yeah it's good to to have uh, to not always have the same format so yeah I really enjoyed it too yep Excellent, nice to hear. Looking forward to Sebring next week. We're going to practice lots, aren't we, Robert? <laughs> I, I should practice. I I, I didn't. I, I wasn't in the rig the whole week again. I didn't have I know, a it's all set. Good. I didn't have a setup uh, until uh, five minutes uh, before the before the session started. So uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to Sebring. I really really love the track, and um, yeah, it's going to be uh, challenging with the bumps and uh, yeah. locking up. But yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to Sebring, yeah. Nice, well, uh, best luck with that. Um, anyone would like to give a shout out to? Uh, to the team boss, of course, and uh, <laughs> this time to uh, 
Medi, uh, who uh, took me uh, under his wings and uh, get, got me a good setup and uh, got me into the race. So, really yeah, thankful excellent. for that. Yeah. Yeah, he's a legend. Yep. Right, mate, uh, nice chat with you. Congratulations, and we'll chat no doubt next week. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Have a good evening. Bye bye. Yeah, mate. Bye bye. So we've got one more interview coming up, uh, and it is the man, the legend, Nick Horn, who joins us now. Uh, Nick, uh, 19th place tonight. You managed to be the meat in the THR sandwich in the end. Um, how was it for you? Like, take us from, from the start, because it seemed like really from the start, you guys were very close to your teammates. Oh, good evening, you beautiful people. Yes, uh, to start, something something happened at the back uh, and I found myself on the grass. I don't know, I haven't actually looked back at the replay to see what happened, but I think someone might have torpedoed the back of the grid. Um, and then I spun again straight afterwards because I was a bit scrambled. And then I spent probably 10, 15 minutes trying to catch up with the pack. Uh, so that was quite good fun. And then I actually got into a couple of battles and did some of my, my best overtakes uh, of this league so far. So I was having a whale of a time. And then I managed to leapfrog my teammate in the pit stops by, by going for the undercut. Uh, and I was so excited, I missed my breaking point and put it in a kitty litter and he got back. Yeah, so it's been an eventful saw, race. We, we didn't see that last one on, on camera, but yeah, I saw it on the timing screen because, yeah, it uh, it was a bit strange to see you go back down there. But um, yeah, it was, uh, was all right in the end. Um, lots of drivers were taking tyres in the race. Uh, more than we usually see when it comes to these 60 minute races. I mean, was that a consideration at any point for you to take some tyres? Uh, not after David's uh, advice from last time, no. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was I, I, I had it tattooed on the back of my hands. David says, don't change tyres, so I didn't. <laughs> well, I'm glad we were awesome service. I thought my advice oh, was start with maximum fuel. Well, did you do that? Also, well, it was also, that, was, that was in the previous race, okay, but you, okay. you also <laughs> said, don't, 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 Lots don't of change tattoos tyres either. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're, I'm basically trying to get a uh, a voice pack for you, David, so you can be my crew chief. Oh, we can work that out. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, you'll be hopefully watching the late Apex later on. Um, of course, got, I've got you... a beer in hand ready to go. Oh, wonderful stuff. Uh, we've got a few topics uh, that we are going through. For some sort of reason, I, I closed the page. Um, but one of them I know is F124. We've got some Ren Sport news. Uh, we've got um, news on iRacing Sounds as well. A video got released. What what news are you excited for for this week? Uh, I, after watching it, I decided that I really want Greg to start reading audio books because that man could talk to me in my sleep. His voice is amazing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we will we will see about that one um, on the, on the next one. Well, thank you for joining us, Nick. Is there anyone you want to give a shout out to? Pleasure as always. Uh, yes, uh, to my teammates for uh, for one for beating me and one for not beating me, uh, and to everyone else in the league for being good fun to drive with. There's a good bit of banter in the um, practice session beforehand, uh, and you guys for the great broadcast. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us once again, and uh, we'll see you back next time. No worries. See you next week. Hey, yeah, mate. Cheers. That's, Bye. Nice. That was Nick Horn there, uh, finishing in P19 today uh, in the overall standings. Uh, of course, next up, Sebring, we've already had a little bit of... Yeah, besides that, it's not really... You are my hero, that's why, yeah. yeah. Um, this week it's going to be in an open um, Sebring at night, and the fix is going to be one hundred percent chance of rain. Nice, not ninety nine. That seems to be quite a common track now. I mean, like I remember in the um, the bait. No, it wasn't a bait, but like it was an early like video where a bunch of the streamers, like um, uh, like Tony, for example, and I think Casey may have been in there as well. We're all doing laps in the wet at Sebring. Then we had Sebring twelve hours. Yeah. I can't imagine Sebring without rain now i mean it helps that we got the board behind well, us well when i was there for WEC, the 12 uh, i was there for the yimser as well but in the WEC, the thunder came so sure. badly uh the rain the rain at lunchtime in florida it's just a thing sure it clears very quickly but it, it definitely comes yeah that was good i managed to worm myself into those streams i wasn't invited to i hey, just were you in them no i wasn't hey. no invite 
TK let me in on his stream, so I was just in voice with him interviewing sure? Greg. That's how I did the. That's how I cheated the system. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who needs an invite where you can just? Is this door open? <laughs> <laughs> well, that will be on next week then for round seven. We'll be into the second half of the season uh, for next week, and uh, yeah, once we apply those drop scores to the standings, we're really going to change, especially with the results that we had tonight so it should be very exciting uh we will be starting the late apex in about 20 minutes time so keep tuned on apex racing tv to catch all the latest sim racing news along with the highlights when it comes to apex racing team and apex racing tv and all the other apex racing brands and of course if you've enjoyed this video please do leave a like on it subscribe to the channel check out our social medias as well and uh, watch our future broadcasts as well because we've got loads of action coming out. I think we've got Radicals going on right now. You can tune into that. Uh, David was mentioning the CMS broadcast that we're doing next week as well on next Sunday. Um, and uh, yeah, loads of other stuff as well featuring a variety of cars coming up on Apex Racing TV in the next few days. So do check all of that out. Uh, but for now, from myself, Sam Fitzpatrick, and from David Sampson, we are going to say goodbye and we will see you back next week at C being for round seven of the championship. See you then. Ciao. Are you struggling for consistency in your sim racing? Does your I rating look like a roller coaster? If so, we have good news for you. The way to get more consistent is to first understand what you're doing differently than the professionals. And VRS is the answer. With our competitive subscription, you will have the telemetry, setups, tutorials, and everything else you need to fully analyze your driving. Our data packs and the ability to compare your driving with the best in the world will show you exactly where to adjust your inputs, change your driving line, and shave seconds off of your lap times. And our powerful and precise Direct Force Pro Wheelbase and Precision Pedals are being used by some of the world's best drivers. All these champions agree that VRS hardware is not just the best on the market, it's also priced well below the competition. So if you're looking to upgrade to direct drive and the best pedals in sim racing, VRS is your answer. If you want to get better, get faster, and make it happen sooner rather than later, you owe it to yourself to find out why so many people are switching to VRS. You'll be so glad that you did. Visit www.virtualracingschool.com and learn why the best use VRS.